friends. Today we are going to make a fun little spider dangling from a spider web. So we're going to work on the spider first down at the bottom. We're going to have our paper going vertically. You can use uh, like a glue stick and I am just going to go around the bottom curve of my glue stick to make the head for my spider. So I'm just using some crayon curve around just a little bit more and almost the whole way around it's just like you're making almost like a letter U shape with the circles not closing it completely over and then I'm going to make a bigger circle just kind of freehanding it so I'm gonna go again with that smiley face curve for the bottom of the circle and making a bigger circle so this is for the body of the spider so we want the head to be smaller and then the body should be a little bit bigger and hopefully centered as much as possible. Mine's a little to the left, that's okay. Now I'm going to draw his legs. So four on each side, since spiders have eight legs. So I'm going to do the four back legs. And so I'm just making a vertical line out and then or I guess it would be a horizontal line from where we are. Horizontal line out and then a vertical line either down or up. So now that I have my spider all drawn, I can color him in. If you'd like some color to your spider, you can leave some spots open to add color to later or you can just do a black outline and add color in completely. So that is totally up to you. So I decided I just wanted to make a black spider anyway, so I would go in with my black crown. So now I'm going to draw out my spider's web. So we're just gonna do everything in crayon. We're just making this nice and quick today. So not too far from my spider's body, maybe about two or three fingers above you're going to make a stretched out letter M. It's gonna look like this, like that flying bird shape. So it curves up, comes down to a point, curves back up and coming back down. So it's like a stretched out letter M shape. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, from that point, make a vertical line that goes up to the middle. So we're working on the spider web. And now from here, we're going to pick up where we left off, right at that line. And we're gonna come down at an angle down to this point. So know where you're going before you make your line. So aiming towards that point there. And then same thing on the other side, know where you're going. And I'm going to add a few more lines that kind of just get cut off the side of the page trying to space it as equally as I can. It does not have to be perfect though. So now that I have those basic lines for the spider web, I'm going to connect my spider to his web with a vertical line. Like he's dangling from it. Now I'm going to make the curving lines. You can flip your paper over so that way you're making a letter U shape. You might be more familiar with that. I think it'll be easier for me this way. So I'm gonna flip my paper around so it looks like my spider's leaping up into the air. And I'm going to make the same curve right above, just like I did here. So I'm going to go above this one and curve in. So I'm making the same curve. It's kind of like a really stretched out letter U or like a rainbow curve. So you could do it either way. So if it's easier for you to think of a rainbow, keep your paper this way and make the rainbows connect. Or if it's easier for you to think of a letter U, go this way. Either way, it does not matter. So I'm going to try to equally space and I'm going to go one in here and then I'm going to connect one over here. We're connecting line to line. You just wanna make it nice and curving if you can. And I'm going to continue doing that down this row. So remember to hold your crayon close to the tip so that it does not just snap in half. If it breaks, you will still use it because it still works. It's just a little bit harder to use. 
So now that we did the two easy parts of the spider web, we're going to go and do the other parts. These parts will have to connect off of the page though. So it's like I'm starting to curve down, but you just can't see the other side. If it helps you, you could go off the page onto your placemat if you're not sure how it should look. So I'm going to continue connecting each time. And the last sections as well. So now my spider web is completed. Now I can get to the fun part of watercolor painting. So we will have a watercolor tray. Make sure before you watercolor paint, make sure that your name is on the back and your room number. So now I'm going to go ahead and watercolor paint on top of this. Remember it's called watercolor painting, not just painting. It's watercolor painting. So these paints have to be, what we would say, woken up by the water. You need to have a puddle. Make sure you always have a puddle inside before you paint. If you're digging the paint out of these little ovals, that is not correct. And you're just going to ruin the brush, ruin the paint, it's not good. We wanna have a nice puddle in each. So I'm not going to use all the colors. You could maybe decide on a pattern but I am going to paint inside of my spider web. So I'm not going to worry too much about my spider since I colored him in. So I'm going to focus on painting in my spider web at this time. So I'm gonna wake up my paint. So I think I am going to use some orange for some Halloween colors. You decide whatever colors you want to do, like fall. So I've got a nice puddle in there, so now I can start to paint. that I finished with the orange and I have some areas where my orange went into the other section or maybe were a little darker or lighter and that's okay. Know that the more water you use the lighter the color it will be. So if your colors are coming out too light you might have too much water on your brush. Notice is, as long as I had a puddle in here I was able to just keep re-dipping and then once this started to have less of a puddle then I would dip some water into that color. So now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to go in with another color. So I kind of did an every other pattern. So I'm going to do a second color and because this color is still wet, there is a possibility that colors might mix or blend together. That is okay, friends, just let it be. You decide how you want to paint in your web. So you might paint a little differently. You might paint two sections at a time or paint a whole um, one of these kind of like triangle strips between the diagonal lines all at once. I'm coloring in between my little letter U or like rainbow curves. I just like the pattern of how that looks. So I'm going to continue painting with a second color. So my second color is going to be purple. So I'm going to wake up my purple, the nice puddle, and then I'm taking my time. If you didn't notice, I'm using just the tip of my paintbrush, keeping my paintbrush bristles nice and neat, not giving my brush a bad hair day by smashing it against the paper using the very tip of my paintbrush. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of my spider web. So now that I finished 
finished my spider web, I can do some finishing touches. And you can see it did not go perfectly. I had a little bit of purple mix into my orange, but don't worry, just have fun with it. So I am going to get my brush wet and wake up some blue and I am going to put just a little bit of a blue watercolor wash in the background behind my spider as if this is just the sky. So maybe you left your spider open, maybe you're painting in your spider. So I decided to color mine in with the crayon. So now I don't even have to worry about that and I can kind of paint all around him with this blue and it won't really bother it. So when I was painting my spider web, you might notice some of the purples are a little bit darker than others. You can always add more water if the purple or if the blue is too dark. You can see this blue is real light because I had a lot of water with my blue. So once you finish all the watercolor painting, the last fun little thing we get to do is we get to choose two sequins to add to our spider for some eyes. So you can pick what color you want. I would definitely recommend choosing two of the same color whether that's green or silver or gold, blue, pink, red. So I am going to go ahead and use some red and we have to use some liquid blue for this. So we're going to do just a dot, not a lot. So I'm going to kind of decide where I wanna put my eyes far apart, close together. I think I like them close together. So I am going to add two very, very teeny tiny dots of blue. I'm barely squeezing the glue out. You might not even be able to see the glue in the video. And then very carefully, I'm going to press the glue into, or press the sequins into the glue. And there you have it.